Hello everyone, in this video we are going to be reading some philosophy. This is from a book titled Letters from a Stoic, the ancient classic, and it was written by Seneca. This one has an introduction by Donald Robertson. Let's go ahead and get right to it and start reading. So we're going to take a look at chapter 35, which is on the friendship of kindred minds. By the way, this is a really good philosophy book and I highly recommend it. If you enjoyed this video, then I definitely recommend checking out this book. This has got tons of great content. And I honestly think that books like this are meant to be read more than once. And I'm sorry, I just got to give it a whiff. Just, oh, incredible. It just smells so good. This book is super inexpensive too. All right, let's go ahead and start reading. Chapter 35 on the friendship of kindred minds. And I'll go slowly. When I urge you so strongly to your studies, it is my own interest which I am consulting. I want your friendship, and it cannot fall to my lot unless you proceed, as you have begun, with the task of developing yourself. For now, although you love me, you are not my friend. But, you reply, are these words of different meaning? Nay, more they are totally unlike in meaning. A friend loves you, of course, but one who loves you is not in every case your friend. Friendship, accordingly, is always helpful, but love sometimes even does harm. Try to perfect yourself, if for no other reason, in order that you may learn how to love. Hasten, therefore, in order that, while thus perfecting yourself for my benefit, you may not have learned... Let's fix the camera here so you can see a little bit better perfection for the benefit of another. To be sure, I am already deriving some profit by imagining that we two shall be of one mind, and that whatever portion of my strength has yielded to age will return to me from your strength, although there is not so much very difference in our ages. But yet I wish to rejoice in the accomplished fact. We feel a joy over those whom we love, even when separated from them, but such a joy is light and fleeting. The sight of a man and his presence and communion with him affords something of living pleasure. This is true at any rate, if one not only sees the man one desires, but the sort of man one desires. Give yourself to me, therefore, as a gift of great price, and that you may strive the more, reflect that you yourself are mortal and that I am old. Hasten to find me, but hasten to find yourself first. Make progress, and before all else, endeavor to be consistent with yourself. And when you would find out whether you have accomplished anything, consider whether you desire the same things today that you desired yesterday. A shifting of the will indicates that the mind is at sea, heading in various directions, according to the course of the wind. But that which is settled and solid does not wander from its place. This is the blessed lot of the completely wise man, and also to a certain extent of him who is progressing and has made some headway. Now, what is the difference between these two classes of men? The one is in motion, to be sure, but does not change its position. It merely tosses up and down where it is. The other is not in motion at all. Farewell. So that is Seneca. It's some pretty... Uh, I just want to say heavy reading. Sometimes it's a little bit lighter. That was a little bit heavier than some of the other chapters, but I wanted to read this one because I think it's important. And I think you can draw a lot from this. So let me just finish by saying, what do you all think about this chapter? Do you think it means anything to you? Um, how does it apply to your life? Any comments or anything like that are appreciated. Until next time, take care.